so the second part of mechanism of respiration and now we'll be looking at it's just a continuum of the brain mechanism here we are just looking at the nerves and what they supply so the efferent okay so the efferent now of course dorsal group controls inspiration and pneumotactic controls the switching but how do they do it then we have muscles of respiration and the signal should go to them right so that's where efferent nerves come in so you have the brain then you have the brain stem so from the brain stem you got all the signals now these things have to go and supply to the muscles and these nerves are called the efferents okay now the muscles here are divided into two groups one is the external intercostal muscles and then we have the phrenic nerves which supply the diaphragm so the two main muscles of respiration first main muscle is the diaphragm okay and then we have the in external intercostal muscles now the diaphragm is supplied by the phrenic nerves and we have c3 to c5 innervation the external intercostal from t1 to t11 the thoracic nerves where do they come from they come from the anterior greyhorn cells what are posterior greyhorn cells related with they are related with the sensory aspect so if you saw my video on pain physiology or any of that you know that the posterior greyhorn cells are responsible for sensory and the anterior greyhorn cells are involved with motor function now how does it happen we'll have a proper flow chart now we have the nucleus which are in the brain stem they enter the spinal cord and we have the lateral column but this lateral column is involved with descending again if you saw the video on pain physiology there the lateral column was used for ascension so sensory and then from here they go to the anterior greyhound cells okay then the innervation component and we have phrenic nerves c1 to c3 supplying the diaphragm and the external intercostal muscles from t1 to t11 okay that's it so that is the efferent then the efferent we need some amount of signals feedback okay we need to know if it's working properly so our brain receives input from two things we have chemoreceptors and we have baroreceptors okay now chemoreceptors are again divided into central and peripheral now again when we are talking about central and peripheral it's similar to central nervous system and peripheral nervous system central nervous system is what is present inside your blood brain barrier so brain and spinal cord and we talk about peripheral mainly the chemoreceptors here are the ones which are present in your carotid sinus and all okay but the main action occurs through chemoreceptors how does it happen chemoreceptors which are present in your brain are sensitive to h plus ions the concentration of h plus in your csf but the thing is h plus cannot pass through the blood brain barrier so the only way for your chemoreceptor to get h plus is if it is formed within the csf now what does csf contain csf contains water now when your brain increases its metabolic activity or when you have a decreased amount of oxygen input you develop co2 okay even during normal respiration you develop co2 that's how chemoreceptors get stimulated even in normal conditions now this co2 combines with h2 to form carbonic acid now what do we know about any acid any acid gives rise to something called h plus ions if you want actual chemical formula carbonic acid is h2co3 which leads to h++ plus plus hco3 minus here you have your h plus this will be stimulating your chemoreceptors which will again start increase the rate of respiration so this leads to hyperventilation in short we'll call it hv hyperventilation okay big h hyperventilation is small h in case if you need it in the future so 
we finished chemoreceptor mechanism in an approximate way then we'll come to herring brower reflex herring brower reflex is a type of protective reflex and it's a type of reflex which tells your lungs to stop okay it tells your lungs that okay you had enough respiration let's just start expiration herring brower reflex is protective reflex which protects your lungs from over expanding so you're inspiring when your lung volume reaches around 1000 ml approximately let's take it to be 1000 ml the stretch receptors inside your lung are stimulated stretch receptors are stimulated and the stretch receptors then lead to again they'll inhibit the dorsal group and this will stimulate expiration so it is and the cycle repeats then you again inspire and then again increase the volume so it's a basically a protective reflex which stimulates on around 1000 ml of volume and its aim is to stop the inspiration because the lungs can't handle more stretch and it's done via stretch receptors done okay now we'll come to the factors influencing respiration if you are looking at regulation you have to look at all the factors that regulate we have a lot of things first we have pain on stimulation by pain it leads to hyperventilation okay imagine somebody pinches you you start breathing faster hyperventilation it can be attributed to the adrenaline release but just know that pain causes hyperventilation then we have proprioceptors Proprioceptors receptors are the receptors which say at what configuration your body is like in what position you're standing in what position you're sitting so on exercise this proprioceptors receptors excessively stimulated so related with exercise so in exercise what do you get we get hyperventilation again boom done okay then we already discussed about chemoreceptors now we'll discuss about baroreceptors baroreceptors are the receptors which are responsible for sensing your pp that's blood pressure where are they located they're located in the carotid sinus and the aorta now on increase of bp what they do is this inhibit the vasomotor center and this leads to decrease in bp along with there is inhibition of respiration and decrease in okay but the amount of effect it has on respiration is negligible okay so you can might as well ignore it part of the syllabus so we have to con yeah but not necessary then we have irritants irritants are any chemicals so they can be exogenous or endogenous exogenous like we have ammonia sulfur dioxide cause hyperventilation and endogenous chemicals like histamine and serotonin also trigger increased amount of respiration and finally we have one small topic those are the J receptors now what do J receptors accomplish by what they do has not been clearly understood but what they actually do and how they are stimulated has been okay J receptor stands for juxta capillary receptors juxta means near just like juxta glomerular apparatus so juxta capillary apparatus so near capillary what capillaries pulmonary capillaries okay the capillary in your lungs and where are they located they're located in the alveoli because that's where you get the pulmonary capillaries okay when are they stimulated they're stimulated they're in the alveoli so there should be something in the alveoli which stimulates them so we have pulmonary congestion what is pulmonary congestion there is stasis of blood in your lungs and due to this what happens some of the amount of blood leaks into the alveoli so pulmonary congestion pulmonary edema accumulation of fluid in the lungs so again that also leads to stimulation of this then we have infection 
course, we're supposed to have infection. Then again, chemical stimulation by histamine and 5-HT3. So all of them stimulate the juxtacapillary receptors. And what do they do? This leads to apnea. That is cessation of breathing. And it leads to bradycardia. And it leads to hypotension. Now, what do juxtacapillary apparatus accomplish by doing this is not clearly understood. But it is given that after these things, the person goes into apnea. Okay. That's it. We know this much for sure. This finishes regulation of breathing. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.